Hi there, welcome to my channel. My name is Chantelle and today we're going to be testing out a new art supply. I finally got my hands on some Fabriano Artistico paper. I know, it's been so long. So let's see how it compares to Arches. The main paper I use for originals is Arches, so that's what we're going to be comparing this paper to today. They are very similar. The first thing I've noticed after unboxing is the texture. I'm a really big fan of this texture. The cold pressed Arches paper is very textured, like compared with other papers it could be classed as rough. That's how textured it is. And there's times when that's great, if you're painting a landscape, if you'd like to do dry brushing, it's the perfect paper for that. However, Often when I'm painting portraits, I don't want to end up accidentally dry brushing. I don't want to create a lovely blurry skin tone and then just accidentally ruin it. And because of the texture on Archer's paper, this can end up happening quite easily. On the Fabriano Artistico, it didn't happen at all. The paper is less textured, so there was no accidental dry brushing. I could try Archer's hot press paper, but I haven't heard great things about it. I have actually heard that the Fabriano hot press paper is really good so that could be something to try. I like there being a bit of tooth, I'm not after a super smooth paper when it comes to watercolour. The Arches cold press just has a lot of texture, especially considering Arches also sells rough paper. I just think the cold pressed has a lot of texture in comparison to other papers. I am now leaning towards Cardi papers, there's just something about them, they're just really lovely to use, but they're very different to both the Fabriano and the Arches papers. When it comes to lifting, the Fabriano Artistico does it about as well as the Arches, which is non-existent. It's one of the downsides to good quality 100% cotton papers. If you're used to using the technique in your pieces, it's quite noticeable. It's why I'm always so cautious using 100% cotton paper, because if you cover the white, you can't remove it to get that white back. And making the jump from a cellulose sketchbook to a good 100% 100% cotton paper, it can be quite difficult to work with. This is why when I go plein air painting, I actually don't look for 100% cotton sketchbooks. I find that having a cellulose sketchbook for painting outside is a lot more forgiving. I can lift the clouds away easily. I can lift anything if I make any mistakes. I feel like it's a lot more forgiving, so that's why I wouldn't choose that when it comes to painting outside. I do think there is a place for both cellulose and 100% cotton. And a lot of it really depends on your art style and the techniques you like to use, but there is a place for both of them. Some people do prefer cellulose over 100% cotton. I personally prefer 100% cotton. The thing that I find so odd with this paper though is that it struggles to lift paint, right? So you would think that all the layers underneath are completely secure, they're not going anywhere. I didn't find that to be the case. Compared to Archer's paper, on this one, I accidentally disturbed some of the layers underneath and picked them up quite often. It didn't lift them to leave white, it just moved the paint around, which isn't ideal. It's not a trait that I tend to look for when choosing paper. I don't mind too much when it comes to sketchbook work because they are fun little experiments and you know the paper quality isn't good, but for expensive sheets or blocks from these 100% cotton brands, you expect the layers below to stay there. Arches paper stays put completely. I mean you could spill some water on the page and it still wouldn't disturb. Another thing I noticed is that you cannot do as many layers as Archer's paper. Archer's never disturbs what's underneath and you can build upon it. But with the Fabriano Artistico paper, if you accidentally spill some water on it, it will begin to bloom and the paint will spread. I like doing random splashes on my paper, sometimes I like to add water to bring back those lighter tones and this didn't work on this paper because it reactivated what was below and made it spread whereas on Archer's paper you can literally blob a drop of water on top and nothing will happen. It will completely settle. It won't look like a water bloom, but it will look slightly lighter. So these qualities really depend on how you like to use watercolor. If you like creating blooms, this could be the paper for you, but the blooms aren't easy to control because they don't sit on top of the paint. When I first went back to Arches after not creating on it for a while, one of the first things I noticed was that the paper stays wet for a crazy amount of time. Like, how is it 
it still wet after 20 minutes. I'd blast it with a hairdryer and that still wouldn't be enough, it was still wet. Fabriano Artistico is not like that. It stayed wet for longer than the Etcher paper does and about the same amount as the Cardi paper but nowhere near as long as Archer's. It really depends on what you're after and if you're working with a lot of wet on wet but this could be a problem if you're used to Archer's paper. Make the move over to this one and are expecting the same drying time. Personally for my art style when I create very loose wet on wet pieces the Archer's paper is perfect because it will stay wet for that entire length of time but when I create characters in my character design series usually I build up lots of of layers and that first layer takes so long to dry that I have to use a hairdryer every single time so it really depends on your style. I will say though that the paper is slightly bigger than what I'm used to so that could also be a factor here. I did notice when using my very big arches paper before that that did dry faster so it could have been a factor. We mentioned it a little bit earlier but there is also a really big positive if you like using water blooms, then this might be the paper for you. Arches stays wet for so long and absorbs so much liquid that any blooms you make will naturally soften and smooth out. Sometimes you can't see any water blooms no matter how hard you try, because Arches paper stays wet for so long that it will always try and soften it. Cheaper cellulose paper has really bold blooms and harsh lines, and if you like that and are used to that, then this is probably the closest 100% cotton paper I found with those attributes. It's really difficult to create blooms on Archer's paper but this came easy. Not as easy as cellulose, like it dries quickly and separates and that's why, but easy in the sense that yes it will stay wet and smooth but if you want to deliberately add some water blooms this paper will work with you and you can do that. The paper buckled about the same amount as Archer's. It had quite a few separate bumps but nothing too noticeable. Obviously though it wasn't completely secure because the glue did come off a little bit in the corner. I personally prefer blocks because they are so easy in comparison. You grab them and go, you don't need to worry about taping and carefully removing the tape, it's so easy. In future if I make more originals or commission or if I was to make a Patreon in future and have an originals tier, I would probably make the switch over to only buying individual sheets. Right now that's not essential since I don't get through very much paper. Most of my work is in sketchbooks really and it's only for originals that I'll crack out the fancy paper. Colour pencils were not easy to use. The texture really came out and it didn't glide over the paper. I wonder if hot press might be better if you use a lot of colour pencil in your work. I was adding eyelashes and I just couldn't get the fine lines I was after because of the bumps in the paper texture. I Arches is similar though, and this does tend to be a cold pressed issue. That being said, I painted a portrait recently and added the eyelashes with colour pencils, and the lines were a lot more precise on Archer's paper. Another thing to note is that the glue around the Fabriano Artistico paper goes around every edge except for one corner, the top left. To remove Archer's paper from the block, the gap is on the longer side on the left right in the middle, so it doesn't hinder working on the paper at all. Whereas as because this paper is literally in the corner, because it's exposed, when you're painting it can lift up. This can affect your watercolour, it can move the paint around and create pooling. Archer's paper also uses a thick black glue that is very noticeable and secure, with only that tiny gap in the middle where you place in your knife and open it up. The Fabriano glue is clear and doesn't seem as thick. When you compare that the entire corner is cut out, it seems a very big and unnecessary move. Because the paper doesn't seem very secure, this is the very first page and you might have seen at the beginning, but there was a lump of cotton on this paper. It's the first page so it could just be an abnormality, sometimes it's quite cute when paper has a handmade look and some imperfections, it's something the Cardi has so I am used to it, but the Cardi paper is handmade and to be expected. For a block of non-handmade paper, I wouldn't expect these imperfections, it's not supposed supposed to be there, it's not something that can be removed. And I don't believe I've ever had anything like this on all of my Archer's paper blocks so far. Fabriano is noticeably cheaper, 
but not cheap enough to have an imperfection on the very first page of the very first block I got. Okay, first impressions. In my opinion, I think this paper is comparable to the Bao Hong watercolour cold press blocks. The blocks themselves look and feel very similar, and the paper texture is paralleled, so Bao Hong paper could be something to consider checking out if you're looking for a much cheaper alternative. I got a block of 20 from Timu during a sale for something like £1.50. It's much cheaper. It was more like a postcard size, but it is significantly cheaper. So if you keep an eye out and try and catch the sales, you might really like that paper. The Fabriano though, I like it. I like the paper. I want to test it out more. I don't think it's up there with Arches. I think it is closer to Bao Hong, which is kind of disappointing considering the considerable price difference. There are positives and negatives, but it's all just personal preference when it comes to paper choice. If you like blooms and tend to work wet on dry with very few layers, this might be for you, but if not, then Arches is probably the best. Especially when it comes to layers. Bao Hong is very similar for the price and I don't know if it's worth spending that much more to get Fabriano when it is so similar. I've actually done a review on both the cold pressed and hot pressed Bao Hong paper and I will leave that video down below. It's a quick one but it's quite thorough. Obviously, another one that you could check out is my personal favourite, the Cardi paper. I don't see enough people try out this paper, but it's amazing, it's my favourite. Doesn't handle masking tape, doesn't handle masking fluid, but it's still my favourite paper to use. But it's not too expensive, so that could be good to try out, and they make it in sketchbooks. I've never been able to get my hands on an Archer's sketchbook, but there are some sellers on Etsy that will make a Fabriano Artistico or Archer's sketchbook for you using the individual sheets. You can also get the Etcher Perfect sketchbook or Coval sketchbooks I believe it is where they use that paper. However, I've priced it all up before. I've got it written in a notebook somewhere and I think it was about 70% more to buy it in a sketchbook as opposed to getting the blocks. So unfortunately I don't think the sketchbooks are really doable for me which means that when I go to this paper I'm not actually getting that practice in that I would have with a sketchbook and maybe that's why I like Cardi so much because I can practice in a sketchbook and I now have the individual sheets. There's a lot of papers to choose from. I've already made a review on the Strathmore 500 series and also the Moleskin watercolour sketchbook. They both have a lot of very noticeable cons and I'll leave both of those videos down below if you're interested. This is how the paintings turned out. I tried something a little bit new with harsh shadows and it was very difficult. Thank you for joining me today. If this has been helpful, please could you give the video a like and I'll see you on Thursday with another video. Bye bye!